are some in this room. Hello, I'm Andy Chada, President of ARC Advisory Group. I'm delighted to have Helmuth Ludwig with us today. Helmuth is CEO, Siemens Industry Sector of USA. Welcome, Helmuth. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Helmuth, this morning we have uh, listened to an amazing presentation from uh, Doug McEwson of NASA uh, about Mars rover landing on uh, uh, Curiosity landing on Mars. And I understand Siemens worked closely with NASA uh, on the design of this uh, uh, Curiosity rover. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you learned from this experience and how you can apply it to the industry? Uh, happy to do so. Actually, um, the design of the Mars rover, which is, just to give you a feel, is the size of a Mini Cooper that they sent up to Mars, larger than everything that was there before, was done by JPL and NASA. What they did is they used the most advanced tools to be able to virtually design and test the Mars rover. Because the reality is you can do it only once. You can only you have only one shot to do it right to land the Mars rover on Mars. Now, what is interesting for us is um, working with JPL and NASA 10 years at this one program. It was a 10-year program. We learned a lot about very, very extreme requirements that our customer had. This all became part of our standard software. Now, that's the same software that actually automotive companies use when they design the most advanced and most fuel-efficient cars. It's the same software that is used today, for example, by Procter & Gamble to design their products and packages. And, and it's also the same software that, um, something you will like, that Callaway uses to design their latest golf clubs. And uh, this is just fascinating what can be done with innovation, technology, and close collaboration between a provider and its customer. Right now, in the manufacturing sector USA, there is a lot of growth. You know, several industries are actually continuing to grow. In your view, what do you see will continue, uh, to, that we will continue to see the recovery uh, over the coming years? Actually, Andy, the growth um, could be even better. I mean, there are some industries, you're absolutely right, which are growing very nicely. In automotive, we have an enormous uh, pent-up demand. Cars are 10 to 11 years old. So, so people buy, buy more and more cars, and we might see one of the best years in 2013 of selling cars. And this, of course, leads to investment in production facilities. In other industries, there is an opportunity for additional growth. Now, why do we have now a significant opportunity? And uh, we all read a lot about what are the drivers. One is definitely a low gas price. The gas price in the U.S. is one-fourth of Europe, one-fifth of, uh, of China, for example. This has a positive effect on electrical energy. It has a positive effect on chemical industry, metals technologies. So all the industries that use feedstock, gas as feedstock. Second, uh, actually, we recognize distance matters. So when you, when you ship something from far away and you encounter an error in the product, or um, you, you, you pay for higher fuel cost, uh, then at once you recognize that there is a strong cost impact from distance. Um, third, the um, closeness to market. The US market is the largest market. So you want to be very close, because the closer you are, the more you can actually benefit from speeding up of innovation cycles, where your customers feed in and uh, their requirements will be used in your latest product design, and there you want to feel and know your customers. So market closeness is an important element. In our conversation, you have mentioned that the U.S. is the, in the midst of uh, manufacturing renaissance. Uh, could you tell us uh, how is Siemens uh, sporting uh, this renaissance? Yeah, actually, that's what I just described. I mean, there are some elements that really point towards a manufacturing renaissance. Um, there's also a mental element. I mean, people look at manufacturing and engineering, again, as something attractive. Doing things, making things becomes attractive. Having said this, I believe there is one aspect which is not broadly discussed today. The manufacturing renaissance is, from our point of view, a software revolution. What does that mean? When you design Mars Rover, as you can design them today, you can test them virtually. If you can make them then, as fast as, for example, SpaceX. They use the same software. They reduce their uh, time to manufacture by 80%, 80%. These are step changes. These are not 5% productivity improvements. These are complete step changes. They can only be done with the right software. 
And there, the US has an enormous advantage. The brightest and strongest software architects, they sit here in this country. And this is why Siemens invested in the last 10 years about 25 billion US dollars in this market. We invested in acquisitions, we invested in organic growth, and uh, much of these investment, many of these, uh, this investment money actually went into software to create the capabilities to answer this new challenge and, the, and, and really to generate productivity advantages like the ones I described from SpaceX. In your view, what challenges does the US face in growing its manufacturing base? If he takes us together, that there, that there are several factors that drive for increased manufacturing in the US, plus the strengths in software, uh, we will see that we need, through the whole value chain, we need a different uh, way of thinking and a different way of education and different capabilities in our people. It starts with a factory floor and it goes through the, through the whole value chain, really. Um, and I believe there we are in a responsibility as companies to make sure that the um, skill development of the future is strongly supported. What do we do for this? We actually we go into high schools and talk to students very early on about the attractiveness to work for an engineering manufacturing company. Uh, we, we do have a Siemens competition where there are students, really the brightest students, you should see those, you would love them. The brightest students, they receive scholarships of up to $100,000. This is very serious. And the work they do, this is absolutely advanced. So there we create already a workforce. On top of this, we invest, as um, you might know, we invest about $500 million every year in training, 50 million alone here in the US. So we keep the workforce really further advanced. And now comes one aspect where I believe that a certain German heritage helps. See, in Germany, we have a very elaborated apprenticeship system. Siemens has about 10,000 apprentices only in, in the company. In Germany, if you compare it to the US, are about three times as many apprentices in a country which is just one third of the size by population. So this is a, a model which is very strong. And there we create people that really have in the knowledge to use these most modern tools. Where do we do this today? When you look to Charlotte, where we just doubled the capacity of our gas turbine plants. There we are running together with a community college, the Piedmont Community College. We're running several training programs, and one of this is an apprenticeship program. So I believe if we want to make this really happen, we all have a very strong responsibility here to create the workforce of the future. Very interesting comments, uh, Helmut. We have been speaking with the Helmut Ludwig, CEO, Siemens Industry Sector of the U.S. Thank you for watching.